Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Mark Haverkorn of River City Oral Surgery in San Antonio, Texas. Today I'm going to show you a left buckle space abscess that came from tooth number 19, the lower left first molar. Let's take a look at the patient's preoperative CT scan. This is an axial view uh, of the soft tissue window on the right side of your screen, which is the patient's left. You can see a rim enhancing lesion. There's the infection right there. That's the dark area in the jawbone that spread its way out towards the cheek. There you can see the infection moving out towards the cheek as the images get lower down on the patient's body. So you can just kind of follow as I'm rolling through here, you can follow the infection from the jaw out to the skin. Here is a bone window of the same image that gives you a better picture of the bones and the teeth. There's the patient's sinuses coming into view. Now we're going back towards the feet. Here's the lower jaw. And here you can see an infection around the tips of the roots of that uh, tooth right there. The dark area in the bone is the infection. You saw it in the soft tissue window as well. Uh, that infection leaked out of the jawbone and went out to the patient's face. And here we'll show you the soft tissue window one more time. You can see the infection going out towards the skin, which is what you can see in the photos. Here's a preoperative photo of the patient. Uh, obviously, I've blacked out the eyes. Right, what you see right here is a little bit of the clear tape that we use to seal the eyes closed during surgery. And then the orangish color that you see is uh, from the skin prep that was given. So this patient's already had their skin cleaned and they're ready for surgery. Um, also, the, the red dots here are the injection sites that you'll see in just a minute. But what I wanted to show you is this, the skin changes that that abscess caused. So you saw it on the CT scan. You saw how it bulged out kind of the whole area here, but sp more specifically right over the abscess. This skin damage right here is going to cause uh, an irreversible scar. I mean, the patient's going to get some sort of scarring here, whether it's color change or something worse, because the skin is really thin. Uh, the infection has eaten away a lot of the fat underneath the skin, and it's also damaged the blood vessels that feed the skin. Okay, let's take a look at the instruments that we're going to use during this surgery. Um, here you can see the Mayo stand is what this thing is called. That's a sterile towel underneath it. Here's a little sterile towel rolled up to help support these instruments. And this stand will be placed closest to me so that I've got easy access to the instruments that we're most likely to use during the surgery. And then I'll show you here in a second we're going to have what's called a back table, which is a bigger table full of instruments that we're less likely to need and so we don't have them quite as readily available. So let's just start in the upper left. Uh, this is a laparotomy sponge. These are the kind of things, this, uh, this is a Ratex sponge. These are like four by four gauzes. These are uh, significantly larger. They're the size of like a rag you might use around your house. Anyway, these two things are the types of sponges that you hear about that are left inside a patient, sometimes on accident. And that is why you can see this little blue thread that's woven into the gauze. You can see another one here. And then here you can see a little blue tail that's woven into this uh, sponge. Those blue things are radio-opaque markers, so that if you took an x-ray of a patient that had one of these inside, you could actually see the gauze on the x-ray. You'd see that line right there on the x-ray. Okay, next are some uh, dental extraction forceps. This is a straight one I don't use too often. This is a, a lower, what we call a cow horn forcep. I think you can see that the tips look like a cow horn. This is an upper universal forcep. These are Minnesota retractors. It looks like there's actually three of them there. Uh, that's a uh, cheek retractor. These are our irrigation syringes. They've got the blunt tip needle on them. Here's our quarter inch Penrose drain, that yellowish drain there. Uh, and then we've got a couple of uh, wet Ratex here that'll be used for a throat pack. Um, this green thing back here is an Instramag. It's a magnetic pad that we can unfold and lay on the patient that will let these instruments stick to it so that we don't have to worry about them sliding off onto the floor. Uh, this is a suction tube. This is a Yankauer suction. Uh, this is a Bovi electrocautery. So it's got a little holster and then it's got the cautery here with the wire that plugs into the machine. Uh, these are uh, mount, uh, mouth props. Um, they're just bite blocks. Uh, and we put those between the teeth to hold the patient's mouth open. These are Wheatlander um, retractors or tongue retractors. Most commonly we just call these sweetheart retractors because they look like a heart at the end. Uh, this is a number nine periosteal elevator. It's probably the most common instrument I use in the OR. Uh, next to it is a uh, freer elevator. And then these are various dental um, elevators. So these are used to, to push soft tissue off of the bone. These are used to basically pry out a tooth. I mean, they're like little pry bars that you might see in a mechanic shop. 
Uh, here's our ringed instruments. So you're seeing two smaller hemostats here. This is a tonsil hemostat that's longer. That's my preferred instrument. Uh, and then this is a needle holder here for holding a suture needle. This is our sharps box. And every time we use a, um, a suture, when we're done, we put the needle in a space right here. And this lets us keep track of how many needles we have. So when the nurse hands us a needle, she adds that to her list, um, or he adds that to his list, and they'll know that, hey, we gave you five needles during the surgery, and then at the end of the case, we want to see five needles here so that we know we didn't leave one behind in the patient. Uh, this box can be closed up at the end of the surgery so that no one pokes themselves and we just throw it into a bigger sharps container. That right there is the tip for this electrocautery over here. Uh, I like a finer tip, not the finest tip they make, but it's a fine tip uh, for the cautery. Of course, we've got a little ruler back here, and then this is our scalpel handle. That's a number 11 scalpel blade. It's kind of triangular and pointy. Those are not particularly useful for making incisions, but they are useful for, for poking into an abscess. So when we talk about lancing an abscess, we'll use that. Okay, so now here's our back table back here. Um, this is the mayo tray that we already looked at, and you can see it's got it let me see if I can pull it up again. You can see it's got little feet down here, and that's the, uh, the stand itself, and that slides under the bed so that the instruments are over the patient. And then, like I said, this is the back table right here. Got a little trash bag there where we can, it's sterile, we can put our sterile trash in there, and then if we decide we need it again, we can retrieve it without contaminating ourselves. That's a staple gun there. These are just little cups to hold liquids. That's a marking pen for the patient. Uh, here's another towel roll with some more um, what we call ringed instruments because they have rings on the handles up here. Uh, this is a fra um, yeah sorry a Fraser tip suction. Um, these are some more hemostats. There's going to be a couple of pairs of scissors in here. This is a sponge holder, so you can put one of these pieces of gauze into that and then reach down into a hole to to apply the gauze. That's a suture laying there. This is a culture tube. Not sure what that is right there. It's turned over so we can't see what's inside the package. Here's some gloves, size eight and a half. Thank you very much. Uh, here's another glove back here. Um, more instruments that we're probably not going to use during the case, but basically what you see here are a whole bunch of different types of these dental elevators that I showed you a minute ago. This thing right here is a molt mouth prop. So I told you these bite blocks fit between the teeth to hold the mouth open. Well, this thing has little basically like flat ridges that you can't quite see that fit against the top and the bottom teeth and then when you squeeze this together that thing cranks the mouth open so in patients who just cannot open their mouth because of the infection this is real handy these are sterile light handles that go on the lights so that we can grab the the handle and move the light around without contaminating our gloves um, that's called an emesis basin or a lot of times we call it a kidney basin because it looks like a kidney you can see there's the toothbrush in there and then the green mouthwash. This is what I use to clean the patient's teeth before we really get going in the surgery. Some sterile towels. Uh, back here are some sterile drapes. Over here are the sterile gowns that we're going to put on. Now that's not on the back table. That's in a separate little cart that you can see here. Uh, but those are sterile gowns to be worn, um, you know, for me and the assistants. Here I'm going to show you how we numb the patient up. This is a left mandibular nerve block or a left extraoral V3 block. That's cranial nerve 5 block. Um, this allows me to numb up the left jaw and teeth without having to be able to open the patient's mouth. And then you'll see me infiltrate around the abscess itself, being anesthetic all around the abscess to get that area numb. Now it's true the patient's under anesthesia and normal pain, but if you numb them up, uh, then when they wake up, they'll have less pain as well. So I always will numb people before I do the surgery. Okay, let's get surgerized in here. Now I've had some requests to show like unedited so videos fast, huh? or longer yeah. footage of the surgery, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Uh, this video doesn't have that many cuts in it, so you'll just get an idea of exactly how long it does take to do the surgeries. Okay, right there I just put the throat pack down. That's a piece of gauze to block the throat so the blood and stuff doesn't get down in their throat. And then I put that uh, green mouthwash in the mouth. That's uh, Paradex mouthwash. It's made out of chlorhexidine, so it's uh, yeah, antibacterial. 30, 30, put it on and then I'm just brushing the mouth really good to try and minimize the amount of bacteria that are in there during the surgery. Um, 
Then on the on the white or the yellow, it, it's, there's not a blank. Yeah. What's this? There. Oh. Okay. Well, cool. Thanks. All right. Get suction. Can you can yeah, you come back to suction, please? Yeah. You can pause it for a second. Yeah. Not a much. Let me show this. Let's see here. Let's hold that, and then oh yeah, oh, film yeah. that. It's all. Just leaking out of there. Okay. Now let's we'll, we'll do the drainage up here. Okay. Here I'm drawing the incision that I'm going to make for, to drain the abscess. You'll remember from some of the other videos that one of the things we're trying to avoid right here is the marginal mandibular nerve, and that incision will safely avoid the nerve. Yeah. Avoid the temptation to suck everything up. <laughs> this is new. I don't know how old it is, but it's new. Okay. Let's do that thing. I was kidding. Cool. Right, ready? Mm -hmm. You got a good view on it, or if you want to change, do you, would it be better over here? Maybe I have a good view right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Wait, 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 wait. Your hand's blocking it. Oh, yeah. Mine? Um, no, his. Here, stand here. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get a culture. Okay, now we got to watch that again in slow motion. So here it is, everybody's favorite part of the video. So I put 1332 in the room. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You got it. Section around. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One with the baby, but no, I won't do it. 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 Okay, well, right here I had to cut a little bit of the audio out of this. Um, sometimes people forget that we're recording this in the operating room and the things you say are on camera. And no, it wasn't me. Anyway, um, uh, we're just going to delete a little audio and then I'll, I'll get back to the normal here in a second. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and they let you out in public. That's a, just a big periapical granuloma growing off of the infected tooth. Okay. Now, I think we can see here, mm -hmm. see the mm -hmm. instrument? Right there, yeah. So the, that abscess just tracked right from the tip of the root out through the skin. Uh, let's take off this back broken one. I don't think it caused the infection, but we're here. Let's get rid of it. It's not helping. Bruce, can I get a uh, four chromic gut on an SH, please? Four chromic gut on SH? Yep. Thank you. Set that thing. Okay. Okay, we're going to put our Penrose drain in. And let me use a better retractor. Where's that? Where did they do? Here it is. Okay. And pull back on that loop. Yeah, you can actually see it coming yeah. through here. We're going to leave it about right at the gum, if I can get it to stay. Let's see if I push that thing. Oh, wow. yeah. I like bad, that. Man, That's a good position. Okay. Can we get the silk suture first, please? That'll be a brain stitch on the outside. GoPro mount for my headlight. It's actually it's actually made for the headlight. We're good. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. So we'll get the whole stitch in since that one broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. There we go. There to there. There to there.
movie to get the E credit for it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. And then, Bruce, I need some, uh, like, just some 3 by 3s or 4 by 4s that can go to recovery. Please. 4 by 4s come to you. Okay. Throw packs okay. out. You want more than, more than No. No. Yeah. I need probably two. Since we're addressing to put over this, I normally do a neck wrap, but it's not going to work real well on her face. Okay, um, what teeth did you pull? Uh, that was 17 and 19. And what are, so we're gonna, the specimen is going to be. Okay, here are the teeth that we took out. This is tooth number 17, it's the lower left wisdom tooth. It's got a funny shape to it, definitely doesn't look like a tooth, but then a lot of times the wisdom teeth just don't look like normal teeth. This is what was left of tooth number 19. Uh, it had a cavity and it was broken, but I took out the two roots, and then you can see this tissue that was stuck to the root, and this was also down in there. This tissue was underneath the tooth in the jaw, and this is what made that dark space in the jaw on the CT scan. It had eaten away the bone, and that left a little dark defect in the jawbone. So this is probably a periapical granuloma, but it could also be a periapical cyst or a periapical abscess, and the way to tell that apart uh, is with a microscopic evaluation. Thanks for watching. I know this is a long video. This is Dr. Mark Haverkorn with River City Oral Surgery in San Antonio, Texas. Special thanks to the patient and the OR staff, and if we can give you a hand, check out our website or call us 210-778-0002. Thanks.